Today, I'm gonna to tell you the truth about what happens when you work with a brand and how you can work with a brand. Welcome back to Barking Jack, I am Adrian, and there is so much distrust in the online community. It's scary how much distrust there is towards content creators when it comes to talking about brands. I put a question out on Instagram and asked, do you have any questions about me and brands, or just brands, working with brands in general? And I was inundated with the questions, but they all stemmed around the same kind of mindset or same cluster of questions. I've, I've got them here. Do you get paid? Do they control what you say? How do you create and manage a relationship with a brand? And how can you tell if someone's content is trustworthy? Before I go to the questions, let me add two little points to kind of, they'll add context and reasoning to the answers to the questions later on. The first one is, I don't take money from watch companies because I get my money from selling watch straps over at barkandjack.com and by taking sponsors for the videos. Like today's sponsor is Skillshare. And also I don't have an unlimited pot of money. So I can't just buy every watch that I want to talk about. Therefore, I need to get hands on with the products. The way that I do that is by borrowing them. And so I've created this little kind of hierarchy of how I prefer to operate. We're gonna start at the least preferred to my most preferred way of interacting with a product. My least preferred is using an authorized dealer. The reason being is I can't be open and honest about that watch. If there's something about the watch that I dislike or I have concerns about a certain element of the product, I can't be open about that because I'd be too concerned that that would create an issue between the authorized dealer and the brand themselves. And who am I to create an issue between the business and their supplier? The second method or the second least preferred method is borrowing watch off a friend. Sounds ridiculous, but I hate, I do have some watch friends which I know they don't care what I say about their product, or we openly discuss that we have very different mindsets around watches, but I'd hate for me to borrow a watch off someone who maybe I don't know all that well, and then I say something negative about the watch, and then they regret buying it or something. So one of my most preferred ways of getting hands on with a watch is through the watch brand. Reason being is that the relationship is just between me and the watch brand, if they get upset because I've said something negative, I'll go get the watch elsewhere. If I want to get hands-on with a watch, I will get hands-on with a watch. It, it doesn't matter. The most preferred way of spending time with a watch is obviously buying it. It allows me to really spend quality time with that product and then give you a real world review of it. So let's jump to the questions. And the first question, I've kind of uh, batched these together. So the first question is, uh, do brands contact you or do you contact brands? And then the second part is any suggestions on how to reach out to brands, emails, IG, etc. cetera. Um, brands, brands have always contacted me. There's been a handful of occasions when I've contacted brands. Generally speaking, the big brands only want to interact with people who are actually fans of their products. So it's all about kind of making your mark first. For example, with JLC, I like JLC watches. I've spoken about them a few times on the channel and then I went off and did a video about Reverso in a map in a web store in Glasgow. The JLC PR team saw that video and then they got in contact and said, shall we go for a coffee? So, which I, I love it when watch brands say, shall we go for a coffee? Because that's, that's my thing. Do brands screen your work before it goes public, i.e. filter out bad reviews? Or how often do brands give you a script or restrict what you say? Never, and I, I don't know if people assume that brands give you a script, but I have never been sent a script by anyone. I, I, I don't think that happens. The relationship is literally as simple as this. Someone might get in contact and say, blah, 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 we've got this uh, watch launching. Uh, are you interested? I'll respond saying, yeah, can I borrow the watch? And then that's literally how it works. There's no contract, uh, There's sorry, there's a contract for me to say I have responsibility of that product when it's in my possession, but that is the only part of the contract. There's no, you have to, as you're borrowing this watch, you have to be positive about it, or you have to mention X, Y, Z. There's nothing around that. With regards to um, the content being previewed before it goes live, the only time that has happened, and that this was me willingly doing it, was when I went to JLC's factory. Uh, we were in their um, their archive section and I was talking to their heritage director, the guy who knows everything about the watch company's history. Uh, and we spoke about some sensitive things. I didn't want to have to take the video down and re-edit it. So I just sent them a very rough copy of that single conversation of me talking with the brand heritage director. As a kind of related point, but a, a bit of a rant connected to that point, um, a recent article that we put online, barkandjack.com, written by Patrick, who writes a lot of our articles. He was interacting with a brand and the PR person at the end of the email said, hope it's a good review. 
and Patrick called me as soon as that email came in and said, what do they mean? I hope it's a good review. Do they mean we hope it's a positive review or is it just a, a weird translation of we hope you enjoy making the review? The email also contained other things like, can you not mention other brands during the article? And can we use the article on our websites? So at that point, we were very close to just canning that whole article and not covering it um, because they are silly requirements from the, that PR person and that company. So we responded to them saying, no, you can't use the article as part of your PR. And we just ignored the request of not mentioning other um, company names during the, the article. We did a direct comparison to competitors of that watch. This content isn't for the watch company. The content is for you. The content is for me. It's about our exploration of watches. This isn't about selling more watches. How much do they pay influencers to post positive reviews slash any refuse to work with you? Do they incentivize you in any way to post a positive review? Uh, I don't know how much they pay, but I do know that people do pay. The lower brands, the smaller brands, the more insignificant brands do pay. Um, to be honest, when those emails come in, those offers come in, I don't engage. I ignore them. And so I don't know what the level of money is. And with regards to incentives, I've not had any incentives. Uh, I'm not offered any incentives and I don't accept any incentives. So for me, I talk about what I want to talk about and therefore it interests me. I, I don't need to have that financial return and I get the financial return by mentioning the straps and by mentioning Skillshare. Whilst we're on it, let's talk about Skillshare. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more. What I've been working on is improving my photography editing. I've recently transitioned over to Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom and I've started using Photoshop as well for the more technical stuff. And I've been using Skillshare to really catapult my learning both from the, the composition, the artistic side, but also the technical side, understanding the tools and what the tools are doing. And the great thing about Skillshare is because it's online, you can just jump in and out when you need. And the first thousand people who click the link below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So check out the link below and enjoy. How long did it take for you to get comfortable being honest, maybe critical in your reviews? Uh, from day one, that was the idea around Bark and Jack was to create a channel that is open and honest about watches and not being paid to create the content. So from day one, that was my MO and that was massively backed up when I interacted with Oris. I was at an, uh, I think it was a Red Bar event with Oris and Rolf, the CEO of Oris was there. I asked him directly if I could borrow uh, a watch and he said, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll make it happen. And then I said, do you need to see the video before? I've not done this before. Do you need to see a video before it goes out? He said, no, I, d I don't care what you say. Be honest, say what you think. We're not gonna change what we do because you dislike something. And that's what I like about Oris is that they do their own thing. They're, they, they're an independent and they act like an independent. And I, I connect with that. I kind of feel like that's what I'm doing. How do you keep any bias when working hand in hand directly with a brand? I don't like the idea of working with, I might've mentioned it previously in this video already, that the idea of working with implies that I'm getting something. I'm, I'm merely borrowing a product. Uh, it's, it's a logistical benefit for me to have a watch from a watch company as opposed to borrowing it from an AD or a friend or something. Um, and I, I guess working implies that I'm getting paid. With regards to being biased, it's all down to your um, motivations. Why am I making this content? Am I making this content to, to suck up to a watch company? Am I making this content to sell more watches or am I making this watch? Uh, am I making this content so I can have access to more watches? My motivation, my intention is to just explore watches and then make honest content for you. That might, so bias doesn't come into it. Some people got annoyed when Oris flew me out to Shanghai and they, they said, well, how can you possibly be impartial? How, you're surely biased about this watch because they've flown you out first class to Shanghai. It comes down to that old saying of there's no such thing as bad publicity, but there is something bad about no publicity. If Oris launched a ProPilot X and just sent me an email with a press release in, would I cover the watch? Probably not. Would I make a video on a watch? Absolutely not. So they're not buying opinions. They're essentially buying content. And also the fact is from the viewer's perspective, that is technically good content as well, because I didn't get a press release. 
I got a presentation from the guy who designed the watch. I didn't get a press release. I got an interview with Rolf, the CEO of Oris. So the detail in that content is far superior than what someone would have got from simply reading a press release. The way that I view events like that and interactions like that is the aim isn't to get something nice said about the product. The aim is to get something said about the product. That's just how I see it. Has speaking negatively about a watch or brand hurt the relationship with the brand? No, uh, and in all honesty, if someone gets upset by my opinions about their product, then I just see that as a weakness. Um, and uh, that kind of leads into the next question of how do they react slash push back against genuine criticisms? Only once has a small brand got in contact uh, when I said something negative or, or questioned the motivation behind doing something. The bigger brands and the ones that, that come to mind are IWC and Glasshood Original. When I've made critical comments about their watches in, in videos, I've just had an email back from them saying, thanks so much for the feedback. And we've escalated this to head office. And I, I think that's an amazing response. It's brands like that who are, are human enough to acknowledge those opinions and respond to them without any marketing BS. That's a nice relationship. Next question is a big one uh, and a very important one. How do I know as a consumer that I'm being fed an honest review? Is there a way to tell? Yes, there is a way to tell, um, but it's kind of, it's a tricky one. Just like when you're buying a pre-owned watch, you buy the dealer before you buy the watch. So you trust the dealer and then inherently you trust the watch. You need to do the same with content. You can't just look and analyze one review or one bit of content and see whether that is paid for or not. Because sometimes it's hard to tell. You need to buy in to that content creator and understand their motivations and where they're going. And then if you trust that content creator, you inherently trust the content itself. So I think it's a long-term thing. In the UK, it's illegal for an advert to be an advert without the consumer or the viewer knowing that it's an advert. It is illegal and it's against YouTube's policy if someone creates content that they're paid to create, that they're paid to have an opinion, a positive opinion, but they don't make it clear. I don't know about international law, but in the UK, that's not allowed. And on YouTube, that's not allowed. Your, your channel will be demonetized if you do that. I think that covers just about everything, but there were so many questions that came in, but they were all around that idea, but apologies if I didn't get to your question. Um, but this is a topic that I'm very passionate about. This is the reason why I started Bark and Jack. When someone pays for the, 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 the um, sponsorship, I tell you. If someone gives me a product, I tell you. And so everything is open and honest here. If you still got questions, please drop me a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Questions about this channel or just questions about working with brands because I'm, I'm happy to share um, insights on that and, and, and what, what else goes on if there's something that I've missed. Guys, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, then hit the subscribe button down there and little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Do please click on the link down below and sign up, not just to support the channel, but to benefit yourself. I have changed my life. I have created this business through learning and building skills from online training. So you can do the same. Jump over to Skillshare and check out what they have over there. And if you're interested in articles, jump over to barkandjack.com and check out what we have over there. And if you're on Instagram and you like watch shots, watch photography, give me a follow on Instagram and see what I'm up to over there at barkandjack. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.